high-quality compressor, such as Live's built-in compressor device, is one of the most important utilities in your mixing toolkit. It's also one of the most easily misunderstood. In this movie, you'll learn how to get the most out of compressor and learn some advanced compression techniques such as sidechaining. Along the way, we'll also explore how sidechaining can be used as a powerful sound design tool in Live's auto filter. This set consists of three tracks, with clips arranged into scenes that allow you to quickly try out a few combinations of drums, bass, and pad elements. For now, we'll be working with the drums clip alone. Trigger this clip's play button to start it. As the clip is playing, let's add a compressor device to the drum track. To do this, open Live's device browser. Then open the audio effects folder and navigate to the compressor device. Drag and drop the compressor anywhere on the drums track to insert it. It will then appear in the track view after the drum rack. Since the default settings don't have much of an effect on this signal, you can also try out some of the included compressor presets to get a quick overview of the kinds of sounds available. Click on the hot swap button to enable compressor for preset hot swapping. This will also unfold the compressor's presets in the device browser. You can now go down the list and double click the presets to quickly replace the current settings. In technical terms, a compressor is part of a category of effects known as dynamic range processors. The dynamic range of a signal is the ratio between the loudest and quietest portions of the signal. A compressor's job is to reduce the dynamic range of a signal by lowering the volume of the loud portions. Here is a section of an uncompressed audio waveform with a large dynamic range. The same audio after very extreme compression with a greatly reduced dynamic range. Think of a compressor as an automatic mixing assistant whose only job is to turn down the volume when it exceeds a certain level. This level is known as the threshold. The amount of volume reduction is determined by the ratio, with higher ratios resulting in more volume reduction and thus less dynamic range. The speed at which a compressor begins working after a signal exceeds the threshold is determined by its attack time, while the release adjusts how quickly the level returns to normal after the signal drops below the threshold. Threshold, ratio, attack, and release are the most important parameters for shaping your signal's dynamic range, and they can be found on almost all types of compressors. Try experimenting with these and any other of compressor's controls before moving on. For a detailed overview of all of compressor's parameters, we recommend reading the section on compressor in the Live Audio Effect Reference chapter of the manual. Normally, a compressor lowers the level of a signal when its volume exceeds the threshold. In some cases, though, we might want to lower the volume of a signal when another signal's level exceeds the threshold. This technique is known as ducking and is accomplished by using sidechain compression. For example, when bass lines and kick drums have a lot of frequency overlap, the bass line can often drown out the kick drum's attack. But by using the kick drum's level to trigger a compressor on the bass line, we can cause the bass's level to duck to make room for the kick drum. To learn how to set this up, start by triggering the second scene, called Drums Plus Bass. As you can hear, there are some pretty serious problems with our mix. The bass line is much too loud in relation to the drums and seems to take energy and punch away from the mix. We can try turning the bass channel's level down, but this seems to quickly make it too quiet. What's the problem? To understand why we're having such a hard time mixing, let's take a look at the actual frequency content of our material by clicking on the title bar of the master track to select it. This will reveal a spectrum device in the master track's track view. Spectrum is a tool that gives a real-time look at the strength of individual frequencies in your audio signal. Use the mixer's solo buttons to alternate between soloing the drums and bass tracks while looking at Spectrum's display. 
This should show you where the dominant frequencies are in each track. It's easy to see that both tracks produce a large peak in one particular frequency area. If we mouse over this peak in Spectrum's display, its amplitude, frequency, and note name appear in a small box in the bottom left corner. Now we know where the problem is in our mix. The kick drum and bass line both have a large amount of energy around 43 hertz, causing them to interfere with each other. But how can we fix it? You've already experimented, to little effect, with adjusting the volume of the bass track. Now try adding a compressor to this track and adjusting the parameters to see if you can improve the mix. This isn't really working either. Because our bass line has a very consistent level and no real transients, there's not much for the compressor to do. It's really just functioning like an additional volume control. Sidechaining offers another solution. To show compressor's sidechain controls, click the toggle button in its title bar. Now click the sidechain button to enable external sidechaining. This enables the audio from routers in the compressor device, which allow us to select audio from another track as the trigger or key for compressor's threshold. We want the kick drum to function as our key, so select one drums in the top chooser and drum rack, kick, post mixer in the bottom chooser. Now, the compressor lowers the volume of the bass line whenever the kick drum's level exceeds the threshold. Sidechain compression is the secret behind the famous pumping sound associated with classic French house music. Try these settings to get this sound. Although sidechaining is most commonly associated with compressors, Live also includes sidechaining options in the auto filter and gate effects. Let's examine how to use sidechaining in the auto filter to add rhythmic interest to a static pad sound. To start, trigger the drums plus bass plus pad scene. As you can hear, the new pad layer is fairly bland. Now add an auto filter effect by dragging it from the audio effects folder of the device browser and dropping it on the pad track. As you did with compressor, open the auto filter's sidechain controls via the toggle button in its title bar. Then enable the sidechain button and select one drums from the top routing chooser. We're going to use the closed hi-hat to control the auto filter's envelope follower. So select drum rack, CH, pre-FX in the bottom chooser. Now turn up Auto Filter's Envelope knob to enable the envelope follower. Because our cutoff frequency is already quite high, it's difficult to hear what effect we've had so far. Gradually decrease Auto Filter's cutoff frequency by dragging its slider down. The filter's cutoff frequency now rises and falls along with the transients of the closed hi-hat. For an even more pronounced effect, try these settings. about compression in theory and practice, and gotten a chance to build various side chaining routings for both mixing and creative sound design applications. Here are some ideas for further experimentation and learning. Another common application for sidechain compression is to automatically duck the level of background music when a voiceover is present. In fact, the audio track for this movie was mixed in live in exactly this way. Go back through the examples in the movie 
and experiment with the other parameters in the selected effects. You'll find that subtle changes to the attack and release parameters, for example, can have a dramatic effect on the output. In the sidechaining examples, experiment with changing the gain of the external sidechain source. It's important to note that this control doesn't affect the gain of the signal going to your speakers, but rather the signal level of the key that drives the effect. Try experimenting with different key sources in the routing choosers when sidechaining. Switching from pre to post FX routing, for example, can make a big difference in how the sidechain behaves. We also recommend reading the relevant manual sections on the compressor, auto filter, and gate effects to learn more about how all of their parameters interact.